Hey fit friends, do you tend to gain weight during the holiday season? If so, you're not alone. So many people struggled with this issue from about Thanksgiving to New Year's. There's so many big meals and family events and hangouts and food and all these gatherings that cause us to eat a little bit more than we realize. And then we get to the new year with a few extra pounds that we have to set goals to lose. But I'm here to tell you that it's not inevitable that you have to gain weight and there are some pretty easy ways to avoid it. So in this video, I'm going to give you six simple tips to follow this holiday season to avoid the dreaded holiday weight gain. So first tip, don't starve yourself. A lot of people do this knowing that there's a big meal coming like Thanksgiving. They won't eat all day or maybe even two days leading up to it. will barely eat anything to make room for this meal. The problem is that's kind of the opposite of what you want to do because your blood sugar crashes, your energy crashes, and then you get to that meal and you're starved and you want to eat everything in sight and you tend to overdo it and then feel worse off. So instead, what you should do is continue to eat regular meals about every three to four hours, have a balanced meal with carbs, protein, fat, a little bit of vegetables. This will keep everything stable, keep your energy stable, and then when you get to that big meal, you won't be so hungry and you'll be able to better control what you eat, the portions you have, and you'll feel much better off in the end. Then what I want you to do is make a plan and decide what's most important to you. So before your big work dinner or your Thanksgiving meal or Christmas meal, think about what foods you like to have, what foods are normally there, and what's the most important to you. Without a plan, most of us will go in, we stack everything onto our plate and we eat it all without thinking. And then we just feel stuffed the rest of the day and probably a little regretful for a few days after, right? So instead what I like to do, and I recommend to my clients as well, is to think ahead of time, make a plan. What foods are really important to you? We all have some connections to food, right? And things that we love and things that are important to us that even have memories attached to them. So think about those foods. Do you love turkey and mashed potatoes? Do you not care for green bean casserole? Think about those things. And whatever you really want, put that on your plate first and plan to avoid the other things. So if you don't love apple pie or you don't love green bean casserole, then skip it. When Then you know ahead of time, when you see it in the line of food or on the table, you can just pass right by it or pass it along and save your plate for the things that you really love and you really want to eat. So you can still feel like you're enjoying Thanksgiving. You get to eat all these wonderful foods, but you don't, and you don't feel like you're missing out by skipping on a couple of things because otherwise we tend to show up and we just eat whatever is in front of us, right? Every plate that comes by, we just scoop it on our plates. So to avoid that, Prioritize the foods that you really want to eat, that you really enjoy, and skip the things that are just sort of okay and you won't miss. Along those same lines, tip three is to use portion control. So I know it's things like Thanksgiving and holiday meals where we just love to overeat, but you don't have to. It's not a rule that you have to stuff yourself. And instead, you can continue to use portion control. So when you put some turkey on your plate, try to think about three to four ounces, which is typically about the size of your palm or think like a deck of cards. That's about how much you should eat. When it comes to carbohydrates like mashed potatoes or sweet potatoes, think about the size of your fist. So about half a cup to a cup. If there's a few things, a few different carbohydrate options you like, then try and do half and half. So with all the foods that you're eating, use portion control. Gravy, try to keep it to about the size of your thumb. That way you won't overdo it. And the best thing to do is start your plate that way. And then if when you finish that food, you still feel hungry, you still want more, then fine, go ahead and get another portion. But a lot of times what we find is if we fill our whole plate, we're gonna eat everything on it. And a lot of times that is way more than we need or feel comfortable with. So start with a smaller amount, then decide if you're actually still hungry and want more food, or if that's a good stopping point, time to rest, wait for dessert, and then you can have a little bit of dessert, coffee, wine, whatever it is you like to have after dinner. A little bonus tip to go along with this is start your meal by eating your vegetables and things like salad first. 
Those will help to fill up your stomach a little bit so that when you get to all the other foods, you'll be less prone to overeat things like your mashed potatoes and gravy. One really easy thing you can do is drink a lot of water. So make sure to drink lots during the day to stay hydrated and filled up. And then before your meal, maybe about an hour or half hour before, make sure that you're drinking a lot of water. That way, again, once you get to the meal, you'll already be a little bit full and it will be easier to control cravings and not overeat everything. And then continue to drink water through your meal. Don't over drink so that, because then it can make it harder to digest your food, but to continue to keep some liquid so that it helps you to get more full and stay full a little bit longer and avoid overeating. My next tip is to make some healthy swaps. So don't feel like you have to get rid of everything that you would normally eat at some of these big meals, but instead try to make them a little bit healthier. So for instance, one thing you might do is have a sweet potato instead of a regular white potato. Now, not that necessarily sweet potatoes are so much healthier than white, but typically white mashed potatoes are full of butter and sometimes cream cheese and salt, and then we pour gravy on top of it. And so by the time you actually eat that potato, it's become a pretty unhealthy food, very full of calories. But sweet potatoes have so much flavor on their own that you can make mashed sweet potatoes with very simple ingredients, like maybe a little bit of honey or stevia, some cinnamon, a little bit of salt, maybe a little pat of butter on there. But typically they're very sweet and flavorful without having to add a lot in there. So making little swaps like that can make a big difference, especially if you're the one to cook it. If you're hosting or if you're going to someone else's event, then make your own healthy version of something like sweet potatoes and take that to the event with you so that there are some better options. Along those same lines, you can do that with things like green bean casserole, which is a pretty popular one. So maybe rather than a green bean casserole, why not just make green beans? You can fancy them up with some nice herbs, maybe a sprinkle of almonds or Parmesan cheese, and they'll be far lower in calories and have a lot more nutrients in them, which will again, help to avoid gaining extra weight by all those extra calories. Another one is things like maybe instead of apple pie, you can make apple crisp. Normally with something like an apple crisp, there's no crust to it. It's just baked apples with things like cinnamon in it. And then you put a topping over the top with something like oatmeal and maybe some cinnamon and sugar. So by doing that, you're cutting out a lot of sweets, a lot of fat, a lot of carbohydrates and cutting down the calories a lot, but you still get that warm, fulfilling, sweet dessert without all of the calories. And then my last tip for you is more about exercise than about food. So I know this time of year we get very busy and that's why it's actually really important to keep your workouts on the calendar. Plan your workouts, put them in your schedule, and usually doing in them in the morning is the most helpful. If you get up, you get it done right away because then nothing else can get in the way of the rest of your schedule that day. So if you put your workouts in your calendar and make sure to get them done, this will continue to help create that calorie deficit that makes a little bit more room for some of those calories. So sometimes I might like to boost up my calorie expenditure sometimes by maybe doing a little bit longer workout or run or something the day of Thanksgiving or the week leading up to it. That way it helps to keep things balanced. You're expending a few more calories, which makes room for a little bit of the extra calories so that when you come out of the holidays, you can easily maintain your weight rather than come out gaining weight because you didn't fit those workouts in. They weren't part of your schedule. They slid off the calendar and now you've added in hundreds of extra calories and now a few extra pounds. So make sure to prioritize your workouts Plus, those will help to keep your mood boosted. They'll help you to digest better. And again, you'll get to the new year without having to set a resolution to lose the weight that you gained. So there you go. There's six pretty simple tips that I personally use every single year to help me avoid gaining weight and help me to maintain my weight all throughout the holidays. So I hope those are helpful to you. If you liked this video, if it was helpful, then please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for future videos on nutrition, fitness, and health. And of course, share this with a friend who might find it helpful this holiday as well. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. 
and blessings on your holiday season.